Impossible is nothing. Doing nothing is easy. So do nothing. Every day is a fresh new start to go straight back to bed. You can never fail if you never try. You may not be strong. You may not be good enough. You may never even be a decent person. 2024 is approaching and it's time to get motivated. How's your investment portfolio going? What about your side hustle? You do have a side hustle, right? I think we just call that a second job now. I realize just how weird motivational stuff is online. I don't know if you've seen these type of videos. Why Sigma males are the extremely dangerous. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is underestimating a Sigma male. The are you talking about? Just because they are <laughs> Why is it always a fucking wolf, bro? Why is it always like a furry? Not the typical alpha male does not mean they are not dangerous. Sigma male. Okay. I was thinking about this because I did pre-watch the first half of this video. I was thinking about this. When you identify as an alpha or a sigma or a beta or whatever you're identifying with, what are you actually identifying with? Because again, I think we are categoriz like categorizable. Absolutely, I think we can fit into categories. But the categories are also a construct of understanding. So do you are you saying you understand yourself enough to categorize yourself as an alpha or a beta or a sigma? Are you saying you want to dream of being in that identity because you think it's the best identity? Because I find it limiting to sort of identify as like an alpha or beta. But I, because I think I'm more versatile than that. I think the reality is that, like, I would say it more as like dominant or um, passive maybe. And I'm like a mixture of both, but mostly dominant. But also what does that mean? It just means aggressive and personality. So like, what does that mean? You know, it doesn't mean anything permanent, but I think people put a lot of like moralizing on the word alpha versus beta. And I just couldn't imagine that because I think categorization shouldn't be about moralizing necessarily. It should be about accurately describing or observing somebody. It's like saying, yeah, regardless of how you feel about it, like that's just like what category you are. And then we can talk about after what that means maybe morally or practically. Males are the type of guy who is quiet but deadly. Sigma males are dangerous. <laughs> it's like an infestation. My mind. These are everywhere. I am the greatest. There is no one See? better than me. It's like mo like beasts and animals and all these other things, which, by the way, are my least favorite devil fruits. And I know it. People watch these? <laughs> Do you want a bite? I'm on a diet. Okay, literally from American Psycho, so even funnier. But I think this is a meme, right? I don't think people take it too seriously. Thank you. You don't need to lose any weight. You're kidding, right? You look great. Very thin. You can always be a little thin. You can always be thinner. <laughs> Doesn't he cut her off with a chainsaw? Like, what's the motivation? <laughs> True. He's a perfect example of a male with like an eating disorder and body dysmorphia. I, I wanted to share my thoughts on motivation today to help you guys get motivated so you can turn that beta mindset into a sigma grindset. Grindset. I'm so sorry. Chapter one. Yes, this video has chapters. Habits. There is an abundance of videos on this topic. So many videos on habits. How do you guys form habits? Because as a neurodivergent, um, chronically ill girl, habits are hard. I'm more into like rituals and habits as in pertaining to like my how much spoons I wake up with and the vibe of the day. But I always do the same thing basically every two hours start of my day. Every fir the first two hours of my day is basically the same thing every day. I wake up, I brush my teeth, I go to my partner's office. I wish him a good morning because he wakes up before me. I leave that, I come to the kitchen, I make myself coffee. I contemplate whether or not I'm gonna eat food with my coffee. And then I either stretch. If I don't eat food, I usually stretch. If I eat food, I eat food, then I stretch. And then I'm usually watching some sort of YouTube video. That's usually how my morning goes. For the first two hours, I am just waking up. I am not a person. And then after those first two hours, I'm basically heading into the shower, starting my day of work, and then working for a few hours, then taking a break. And then sometimes in the morning, we watch an episode of One Piece. That depends. Like this morning, we didn't watch it. We watched it after we took our walk. We took a walk today, which we're also trying to integrate into our life, but we don't have the habit or built up of like, or the ritual maybe. We just don't have it built up. The Greeks figured this shit out 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, they were like, bro, you got to hit the gym. Come on. Oh, so true, bro. Wait, who was just telling me this? I think maybe it was my partner. I don't know. But this is so true. How even then, though, people worked out to be listened to. Because remember, philosophy is kind of nerdy. I think people forget, like, this is kind of a nerd thing to do. 
to like read and study is very nerdy. Even the men who claim in the alpha spheres, like it's all about education. It's about learning. None of those men read philosophy books. They have not read the books. They have not read anything on stoicism. They butcher it. They watch a couple of videos on YouTube and they're like, yep, I get it. So even like in this era, I think there was a desire for even the nerds to sort of perform masculinity, but also it just is really good for you to like work out. Huh. Stop being lazy. What are you, beta? Plato himself beta? actually said adjustable dumbbells are all you really need for a cost efficient, well-rounded workout. Actually, when True. I was looking into <laughs> stuff for this video, I realized Aristotle actually said something about the 4 a.m. grind. You know how there's so many videos about 4 a.m. workout or 4 a.m. go up and do sh Apparently Aristotle said- My mom is a part of the 4 a.m. grind. My mom starts her day between four and five, wakes up before every, before the whole world. She always says, I love waking up before the world does. This woman gets all her shit done by noon. By noon, my mom's day is free. She goes to work and comes home and she could do whatever she wants. And then she goes to bed at, what, 10 to midnight? I don't know how she sleeps so little, though. I need so much sleep, but to be fair, I have fibro. But, like, my mom is on that grind set, bro. And she doesn't even think about it like a grind set. She thinks about it as, like, a meditative practice. My mom is a very ha habitual person and she has a lot of rituals and so my mom has like some really good habits and she's very, very like independent. So she's just very good at doing those things, you know. That rising before daylight is also to be commended. It is a healthy habit and gives more time for management of the household as well as liberal studies. That 4 a.m. liberal studies grind. <laughs> It's so funny. Caitlin says, I'm a little bit behind, but I've thought about acceptance can lead to stagnation, like using it is what it is as a cope versus accepting to necessarily take action when change is needed. Yeah, I think some people hear like humans going to human and they think like it's a justification for bad behavior. But radical acceptance in the philosophy way is about actually understanding that it's happening instead of being in denial that it is happening. So you cope less. The goal is to cope less, to to actually face reality. You know, a lot of people will say like, I'm not like that human over there. That human's a monster. That's a cope. When you separate humans away from you and you make it seem like you are never like them, that's a part of the cope. Now, to also say everyone is as bad as me is also a cope. Everyone is exactly who they are. That's the real, like, that's the reality. Like, so I watched a cheating video on TikTok and the guy was like, cheating is human. Like, why are you acting like it's that deep? And then the woman replying to it was like, cheating is a choice. You're making a decision. And the truth is like, everything humans do is natural. Everything we do, because we are nature, right? We're just like a living organism on earth. So everything we do is within the realms of nature and everything we do is reasonable. It's like the bear, okay? Like bears are gonna bear. And being upset at the bear for like eating your wife is within reason, but also one must accept that a bear will do what a bear does. Humans will do what humans do, right? Like we're all just doing what we're going to do and that's it. Now, it's not meant it's not meant to say now you do nothing. It's not meant to say you do something. It's meant to say start first with accepting that this is reality and then use some sort of wisdom or thoughtfulness to make then a decision. But this idea of like I can't believe this happened to me. This idea of like, my world is shattering because something happened I wasn't expecting. A lot of preparedness, a lot of radical acceptance is about preparedness. Recognizing that everything that happens is within reason. The Greeks understood the importance of habit. Not necessarily habits to just exercise or motivate you to do certain things, but your whole character is, is built around habit. Aristotle even claimed that virtue itself came from habit. This is not innate in us, but something that we need to practice to then gradually make it become part, a stable part of your character. In Just like philosophy and meditation and all those things, even I get trapped in the desire to want to think instead of meditate. And thinking isn't going to help all the time. Sometimes you just need to not think. It might seem that for some people it's easy to do certain things, but it's because they develop this over time. And so can you. There's a So can you. True. Actually, a misquote by Aristotle that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Oh. Mm, but remember, you know, they say practice makes perfect. I had an ex who used to say practice makes permanent. So practice correctly. And I thought that was kind of interesting. So beautiful. Shame he never said it. <laughs>
Greek writing, unfortunately, doesn't sound like it would fit. And by the way, people have darknesses to them, issues with themselves. We all are mistake. We're just like these little walking mistakes, right? We're all trialing and erring our life. We're not perfect. And so this idea that these great people must have also always been great. It's like they also were probably pretty awful at some points. We definitely all have problems. We're definitely all toxic in our own ways. This idea that, you know, Leo Skeppy can't get better. I don't believe that. This idea that like every incel can't get better. I don't believe that. This idea that people can't get better. I don't believe that. I just think that not everyone wants to be. And I think that's the hard part for people to realize because everyone thinks like, no, everybody wants to get better. Okay. Since there's such an abundance of literature and videos and whatnot about motivation and and people always ask me, oh, I want to read philosophy. Why should I start? I would highly recommend Epictetus, specifically not this one, the Enchiridion. This one just has it contained. And the Enchiridion literally translate to handbook. I didn't know this, but it's meant to keep practicing. It's not that you read a book once and you're wise. It's something. Philosophy is something that you should always sort of keep working on, keep practicing, make it part of your character. Exactly. It's a everything is a constant growth. That's why being a five doesn't matter. So when people are like, oh, Brittany thinks being a five means she's the most enlightened. No, the no, no. Like if you think that's it, it's because you buy into the idea that that's possible. I don't even think that's possible. I'm not even sure enlightenment is literally possible except through the construct of what we think that is, which is really just being on the journey and accepting that it's a journey. The closest we get to quote unquote enlightenment is not the man on the mountain who glows with energy. It is literally accepting that it's a journey and you'll never get there, right? So this idea that we have this fantasy of enlightenment is a fantasy of, of sort of like where we could go. Just like finding objective truth outside of all of our perception is sort of a fantasy, but it takes you further and some and so if you want to go further in so many ways than thinking it doesn't exist by like not engaging with it. See how there's a difference. There's a difference between engaging with it and looking for it, even though you won't you know, you won't find it. Then giving up on even trying because, you know, you won't find it. I want to pursue it, even though I won't find it before I die. Objective truth, because, you know what I mean? Like you you learn so much about yourself along the way. Stop. Kessler, you do this to piss me off. There's no way. Griff have got there. You do not understand. What, I've seen Berserk twice through. There's no indication that Griffith is a five. What am I missing? What are you thinking? How did he do that? He com He absolutely did not do that. That's not what he was doing at all. He was absolutely attached. Griffith was so attached, right? He was completely swallowed by all his ego. Griffith is nothing but ego. So like he did not get there. I don't know how you watch like again, I'm just going off the the anime, how you watch Griffith and think he let go of attachment. His whole life is attachment. He's absolutely just like a two who's attached very strongly. There's no way. But I appreciate that idea because I think people don't understand what a five is. Again, a five is an a realization of like practicing unattachment and the idea and the realization that like we really don't know as much as we know. So again, when I'm practicing like my five space, because it is a practice, like PewDiePie says, like philosophy and everything is a practice. You're practicing a, a, a radical acceptance of your place in the universe, which takes you away from everything else that's going on, this attachment you have to your gender and your identity and your race and your job and hell, even your family to some extent, right? To a whole extent, if I'm being honest. So that's why it's also scary to practice like, everything beyond fiveness, whatever that is, plus like everything involved in it, because you it's a outside the ego to the best of your ability, which means practicing like eradicating your biases and everything else. Even to have an opinion is to sort of like be a two in a way. To even have an opinion is referring to an ego, which is referring to a value system that you constructed. So when you root things in the ego, you're rooting things way outside the objective and into the subjective. I think there's so much modern take on problems that aren't any different now from what they were back then. We are literally standing on the shoulders of giants. Why not take advantage of it? So let's read some passages from it that I picked out. How to fight against impressions. Every habit and faculty is formed or strengthened by the corresponding act. 
Walking makes you walk better. Running makes you a better runner. If you want to be literate, read. If you want to be a painter, paint. Go a month without reading, occupied with something else, and you'll see what the result is. So if you like doing something, do it regularly. If you don't like doing something, make a habit of doing something different. So whenever you do something, even just once, good or bad, you've automatically made it easier for you to do that again. That's why it's always good to examine yourself and consciously choose which path you want to take. Habit shouldn't be some mindless uh, repeating of action, but rather a deliberate attempt of where you want to take your life. Mm. The problem is, especially when you're married to the bubbles in a particular way, which is fair, you're married to your job, which gives you a schedule, which you form your habits around, but it was never about you. So when you move through life and you're forming habits on someone else's expectation of you, whether it's literally at work or within your consciousness, you're having a relationship that's either going to help you or hinder you, which is why sometimes you get burned out at work. You're like, oh my God, this is not for me, which is why I say one of the meditation practices I practice is putting myself on like this like abandoned forest, like this destitute for or like this forest in the middle of nowhere and asking myself as I am now, like, what do I want? What am I aiming for? And then figuring out my life around that. So getting the jobs I need to do what I'm doing, getting the lifestyle going that I need to do. This is about lifestyle. Moving into 2024, I really want to incorporate that word lifestyle into the content. That's a huge shift for me is I want to make lifestyle philosophy related content. I'm not going to sell you cottage core. I'm not going to send you gym life or sell you gym life. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm going to give you tools that help me get exactly the lifestyle that I wanted. And then you have to pick up those tools and see if they work for your life. And if not, you have to get the tools from somewhere else. But having that realization that most people are on this weird cycle, clocking in and clocking out and clocking in and clocking out. And that's why people come up with these terms like NPC and like, oh, these robots, these bots. They're just people who haven't conscientiously, like PewDiePie said, made the choice of where they want their life to go because they do feel like they're just reacting to reacting. They feel like they have no other choices. And I've been there. I've been that person and it wasn't working for me. If I didn't change my life, I was going to end it. So I needed to change my life. I needed to transform into a different version of myself. I needed to get into a, you know, perfect cell form. You know, I needed to change myself in order to get there. And in order to get there, I had to ask myself why I wanted to get there in the first place. What was my goal? So I'm, I'm a person who works backwards. I don't know if you're like this, but I work backwards in school. I couldn't do a school assignment unless I knew why we were doing it. I can't do anything. My parents would be like, do this. I'm like, why? I need to know why. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. Like when people are like, oh, do this paperwork. I'm like, why? Like, I need to know why we're doing something. Otherwise, my brain just doesn't know what to do. Like, I don't even know how to fill out a form unless I know why I'm filling it out. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I feel like mm, I'm just confused now. So for me with my life, I was confused because I didn't know what my goal was. And a goal to be happy is like, that's one step. But then you realize, you know, happiness is an emotion. So you're like, well, I can't have a goal to be happy because the goal will definitely go away. So what's the goal? For me, I call it joy, which is a continuous foundational relationship you're having with the fact that you exist and there's existence. So that's like a little different. That's like a little bit more introspective, if you will. It's like a very deep relationship I'm having with myself, right? Because the best and deepest relationship I do have is with myself. So PewDiePie is right that a lot of people go throughout their life and they literally just go through it, forming these habits around other people's expectations and needs of them. And then when they ask themselves, like, what do I want? It's like, Oh, no. And then they have that existential dread. They have to peel off everything they've learned from other people and actually make a decision for themselves. And that's when they discover, like, do I even know myself? And you probably don't. You probably only know the version of you in relation to the bubbles. So then you have to make a decision. What do you do um, at that point? And at that point, you start gathering tools, which is really difficult. It's almost easier to go back into the place where you just go back to work and doing the thing because at least the thing tells you what to do every morning. <laughs> I think it's good to ask yourself why you want to develop a habit. I think for a lot of people, it often comes down to maybe an end goal or appearances. You want to reach certain things. But I think if you do it for those sort of reasons, you're just making it easier to quit when it gets hard. And 
Well, there's well, okay, hold on, let me. And easier to quit once you reach that goal. Yeah, so you don't want to make the goal superficial, right? Because if the goal is superficial, it's only temporary, which is so these are two things. If you're looking for the meaning of your life, whether you're motivated or not, it has to coincide with like the value of your life. So the reason I work seven days a week, one, I enjoy it, but two, I am motivated by my end goal, which helps me mind, body, and soul. Working absolutely contributes to more net positive to my mind, body, and soul, to every part of me, metaphysical and physical. So that's why I do it, right? It's not a thing I do to survive, even though it's a thing I literally do to survive. Without working, I wouldn't be able to eat or shelter myself. But now I work, before it was like survival work, and now it's working in a way that, of course, helps me survive, but it's not the same thing. Like, there's a survival adult worker, a survival person, a person who's like, literally like, like it's draining them and it's a net negative. And then there's working that's a net positive because you also found your actual reason why your meaning crisis is over. You're not just surviving. You're not just like any job will do. Anything will happen. And even now, if I lost everything and I just start again, I don't think I'd feel like I was surviving again because I already found that thing that stays, that foundational joy that stays no matter how bad life gets. So that's the thing that I was looking for. It was like, how do I ground myself no matter how bad life gets? And then do I, how do I ride the wave of that stress? Now I'm still learning because even though I discovered it and I put it into practice, it's not where I want it to be, which is why the journey never finishes. I'm so excited. So every time something more stressful happens, it's an opportunity for me to learn to ride the wave of that and to like let it go. And again, I'm so young. I have so much time ahead of me and yet my life is going to be so short. And before I know it, I'll be dead. And it'll be interesting to see how much of that, that relationship I have, like how good I ride with the wave instead of trying to fight against it, which is so natural, especially since we're so scared as like people when things get rough. So much of your fear wants to consume you, which is why I think fear is the root of all evil because it just wants to consume you and it wants to stunt you and it wants to tell you that like you are nothing. And so that's why you have to like meditate your way out of the attachment of fear and into a place of accepting like this is my life right now and this is what's happening and it is not anything more than what it is it is simply what it is to me life isn't or shouldn't be an end goal it's rather fleeting and short the goal mm -hmm. of develop i when people tell me life is short they get it when you say life is long you know we're gonna have a lot of life to live i'm like i that just tells me something about you right when i hear life is short i'm like life is so short and I think you have to be very grateful and very joyful to know that. I think you have to have a real relationship with yourself and the people you love to know how, how short life is. I really think people who think life is too long are probably people who are in suffering, which is fair. Because when I was suffering, I really thought life was so long and I was going to suffer for so long. But life is so short. Now that I'm in my joy, like life is so short. And that's why you have to practice more gratitude and humility because like you only have this time, baby. And that's it. It's done. All this stuff that you think is important. Your stuff is going to be someone else's stuff. Your whole life, like it's all just right now. You know? Developing different habits should be for you to develop yourself, your character and who you want to be. And another beauty of not worrying about the end goal is to look at it as... Yes, I not, may not be exactly where I want to be, but at least I am on the right path. And that doesn't matter if you're starting or wherever you are, it, it doesn't matter. So habits can be a great tool, but I also think they can be quite harmful if you're not careful. I think they can instill a sort of false sense of controlling people, especially if you are looking at things for an end goal where if I do these specific things, then I'll reach this goal. Absolutely for sure, I'll be successful. <laughs> Because this person told me to do it this way. Life shouldn't just be a string of repeated motions. A lot of the best moments in life come from spontaneity. So always examine yourself and what you're doing. And you can't go that wrong, right? <laughs> what wrong can come out of it? Know yourself. That's my little take on habits. I love habits. Fire, bro. Mm. Habits. It makes me feel like I'm living the life I want to. And it makes me feel like... It if it hits the fan tomorrow, I still live the way I want to. I get a lot of joy out of it. It's helped me being 
consistent with things I think are really positive for me in life. Anyway. The master has no possessions except G Fuel. The more he drinks G Fuel, the happier he is. The more he buys G Fuel, the wealthier he is. I love this. This is a very good sponsorship. Very good sponsorship. That's very funny. G Fuel nourishes by not forcing, by not dominating the master leads. Petey Pie's Lingonberry. Wow. It's the best flavor. Wow. Lao Tzu. Thanks for the shot. Chow to Ching. I have Chow to Ching. <gasps> PewDiePie, yay! I keep bookmarks with $5 bills. <laughs> yeah, PewDiePie Felix has really found himself, bro. Um, June says he seems to live such a healthy life now. Oh my God, bro. Felix really found himself. Look, I have the same book. That's so funny. Um, I mean, Tao Te Ching is a classic, but we really, I think PewDiePie, that's why I like him. He reads books. He seems to really focus on the discipline. He's like, his humility is amazing. But also he has a stance and he definitely knows like what he thinks is silly and what he doesn't. But also like he's very focused on his family. And I just I love I love his journey. Like it's made me so excited um, to see him just transform over the years. That's why people who dismiss him as the person he is now. I'm like, you do not understand this man's journey, bro. He's really thought about it, you know. Chapter two, action. What prompts action? Why do anything? Why you click on video? I don't know. According to Buddhism, Will comes from wanting pleasure. You want pleasure right from me? And by not having it, we suffer. Ugh. Most beings live immersed in the enjoyment of sensual pleasures. Others driven by the need for power, status, and esteem pass their lives in vain attempts to fill an unquenchable thirst. I think this is important to remind yourself. You will never be satisfied. You just won't. <clears throat> Napoleon kept trying to conquer sh when is it ever enough? How much stuff do you need? Ask anyone on the planet almost, they'll want something more. I think everyone has this fictional image in their head, like if I had this, then, then I'll be satisfied. No, you won't. No, you f***ing won't. I guarantee it. <laughs> Sorry to call you out. While this idea of wanting sensual pleasures, receiving them, suffering in between, and then receiving- Because everyone's looking for a magical answer. Everyone thinks there's like a magical answer. And the magical answer is like, it's not, it's so simple, but the answer is, it's the relationship you're having with yourself. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for the relationship you're having with yourself. Even when you're upset with other people, it's about the relationship you're having with yourself. I say it all the time, but I know it's really hard to imagine because again, I come on YouTube and I like show you my bias and my ego and I show you how I get upset at people. But ultimately, I'm showing you that I'm upset with myself. I'm showing you the part of me that has the bias and the ego to say, these are my values. Values are beautiful things, but they are about the ego. They're saying, this is what keeps me in line when I'm interacting with the world and myself, right? Which can breed conflict between yourself and the world. And those values are what separates us. Our, those values is what makes us feel uncomfortable around one another, but it's also like a self-awareness that I think is really valuable, which is why in meditation and in silence is almost the only time you can maybe eradicate ego for a moment because you're sort of, that's the only time those values are unnecessary in some way. Like silence and meditation in a very physical sense is probably the only opportunity you have to eradicate the ego, though temporarily, because it's the one moment you don't need to have it. When you're driving, when you're acting out at the supermarket or you're, I'm sorry, not acting out, but when you're interacting at the supermarket, even when now while I'm working, while I am working, I have to have an opinion. I have to tell you why I have them. I have to have values. I have to have arguments. I have to, because there's conflict, because other people are hearing it. Other people are disagreeing. Other people are expressing their relationship with their values and we're all just expressing our egos to one another. Oh, you think this? Well, I think this. And you think this? Well, I think this. And then it's a cycle. That's why I joke like a conversation between fives doesn't exist because like what is there to talk about when you're trying to meditate out of the ego? There's nothing. There's no conversation to be had. You're maybe sharing ideas, but like what is the conversation to be had? There is no conversation. While this idea of wanting sensual pleasures receiving them suffering in between and then receiving it not feeling satisfied it's it's the problem with like hedonism stuff it runs out feels like a sort of pessimistic view of existence that doesn't seem very fun to me at least buddhism does teach you how to overcome it 
But I also believe it has merit, again, to examine your actions and make conscious choices of, of what you want to do. Are you indulging something deliberately or just for the pleasure of it? It actually helped me. I've said this many times, so it's getting boring, but it really did help me examine my actions with, with drinking. I, I wouldn't have even thought about it otherwise. I was really just drinking for the sake of feeling good. I had anxiety at night and I wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> so too much nice. information. And it helped me realize and just cut it out away from my life entirely. And I'm free from that suffering because I don't nice. have that craving. Craving, according to Buddhism, is suffering. And to be honest, I feel like I'm still always trying to fight bad habits as much as I love. Ha We're all trying to fight bad habits. We're always trying to fight our ego, fight the things that are from our childhood. That's why I really appreciate Preach coming out and saying like, oh, this is from my childhood. I reacted this way because of my childhood. Like, that's really beautiful, bro. To be like, oh, yeah, shit. That, OK, that's that scar from then or. Even like when I start to get overstimulated, why am I even overstimulated? Why am I upset? And I'm like, oh, shoot, like I did this and this and this. You're always fighting your biology. You're fighting your trauma. You're fighting the way you were raised. You're fighting your bad habits. And that's why I say there's enough conflict within the self. You really don't need to engage the world. But of course, it makes for good content. It makes for good radio. I'm watching the Beckham series right now on Netflix. And holy shit, like we love conflict with one another. We just love it. And I can't even fault people because it's such a good distraction from the self. So I have to be very careful myself not to engage too hard into my job when I'm not working because it does take away from my quality of life. Because even though I work every day, I don't work every minute of the day. So I need to remember to like zen out and, you know, meditate and breathe. Even my partner the other day, he's like, we should meditate more consistently as like a couple. And I was like, that is so romantic. But go on our walks and just like, let go of our attachment to our jobs and like our life and like those things that are just here for those t very in a very temporary way and to remember to be very grateful that we have each other and like there's something really unique and profound about that meeting and so we want to like give a lot of respect to it and gratitude um but yeah it takes it you're always fight that's why i'm saying like it doesn't matter if you're a five the journey can end there in the same way the journey can end as a two in terms of your introspection but like it also doesn't have to because like you're always growing, you're always learning. And even as a two, you can always be more introspective. You can always know yourself more even within the bubble. And you can always know yourself even more outside of the bubble, right? Even though we all live in bubbles, right? That's like, that's the part that's really hard because people want it to be very simple. But it's like simply the reality that live, we live within the bubble of the universe and within that bubble of the universe, we live in a society and within that society, we live in our own little micro bubbles and cultures. And then within that, we live inside of ourselves. And it just depends on which part of your relationship you want to have at the moment, you know? Bad habits are equally easy for me to pick up. Doom scrolling on the phone is such a typical example, especially watching short videos like TikToks and, and mm. YouTube shorts, because to me, it doesn't feel like a conscious choice. It feels rather that I'm mindlessly doing it for, for the sake of being entertained at the moment. Don't misunderstand me as well, even with Buddhism. Mm. Scrolling through TikTok doesn't turn off your brain. It turns off your consciousness. Most of the time, it is a sep you're building a separation between you and yourself um, and focus more on the outside, the existence. Like TikTok is a good example of interacting with existence. But ultimately, you want to have a, the, the most profound relationship with existing, right? Because that's the relationship you have with yourself. But as a person who does like two hours of TikTok every day at night, I totally get it. I spent a lot of hours on TikTok and YouTube. Um, and so for me, like I do understand the desire to like, I always say like, I'm turning off my brain. I'm going to watch TikTok. That's me not meditating, not being thoughtful. That's me interacting with existence and just looking at it, being like, like I'm observing the bubbles, but I'm not really turning off my my I mean I'm I'm in workspace now I'm not I'm not I'm not turning myself I'm not living I'm like still working or I'm like you know what I mean it's like um I'm not just being when I'm on TikTok but I just don't think there's anything morally wrong with that it just might not help you remember that TikTok is a tool is it going to help you with being no but it will help in other ways maybe or not and then you have to make a decision about how to interact with it pleasures are fine as long as it's deliberate and not attached but it doesn't feel very deliberate when I'm just like. <laughs> That's a really scary thing to realize. Am I doing this deliberately or am I like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Did I lose track of time? Am I even here? Am I making the decision? 
Was that on Reddit? I hate it. I hate that habit of mine. Going back to the Greeks, actually, for a moment, there's another passage of Epictetus. What aid can we find to combat habit? The opposed habit. Against sophistry, one should have the practice and exercise of rational argument. Against specuous impressions, one should have clear preconceptions polished and ready to hand. I don't like this translation because I don't understand the words. <laughs> I did a video recently where I started picking up drawing. And the reason I wanted to do that was because instead of just spending 10 minutes on social media, and if I have that time, which I, as a new dad, I don't have much time. And, and instead of having that 10 minute that I get for free spending on social media, I thought, why not just do something more deliberate that I actually makes me feel good. And that's why I picked up drawing. So to counter a bad habit, do a good habit. Chapter three. Our Yui says, so take yourself as an example. If you were in a dis if you were to discuss an idea with another five, would that discussion be geared more towards creating a way to ex execute that idea rather than just talking about the idea? Um, I find that in my lived experience, the conversation just becomes my values over your values, no matter what we're talking about. Even if it's something like talking to them about anime, it's really like, oh, I like this anime. Why do you like this anime? I hate that anime. Why do you like this anime? And it just becomes like a normal conversation. I haven't had a conversation in which the conversation just isn't about our egos unless I'm having a specific kind of conversation with somebody who's interested in like, I had one conversation as ex an example with somebody who's like, I don't know if they would identify as a five, I'd have to ask them. But the closest I get to conversations that feel incredibly specific is when it's not about like my preferences over your preferences or my true idea. It's not about getting upset. It's not about needing to regurgitate the idea back to one another. It's about giving each other like pure tools like, hey, I did this. Oh, cool. I did this. All right. Thanks. It's like more like I did this. And then sometimes it's about like, oh, understanding things and doing things. Um, but again, like fives are individuals. So there's no way for me to answer this question without like just using anecdotal experience. But it's just like humans are going to human whether there are a two or a five, right? So it's it's not it's not like this magical thing like, oh, the fives are talking, something magical is happening. It's like, no, it's just people talking. And then they have to decide in the moment, what are they doing together? And it's probably just a conversation like normal people because like that's all we are as people, you know? Our goals, what should we strive for? I don't know. What's the point of anything? Fuck, I didn't think of that. <laughs> and it would involve, sorry, I'm going to rewind that. It would involve um all the things like depending on what kind of a thinker you are you're just going to have all the kinds of conversations talking about the idea ex uh, uh, executing the idea talking about the purpose of the conversation but it all ends up being the same thing if you're only thinking about it through the ego if, unless you're on the same page of belief because like fives believe different things right i'm not even sure like how many people really understand even what i'm describing sometimes when i describe a five like i always have to like wonder like are we talking about the same thing because like you're holding way too hard to your like your ego and your values right now, right? Like I admit fully that all of my values are about my ego. Of course they are. They're not objective. They're completely subjective and they're subjective based off Britney's ego. That's why they have to exist because my ego is the one that has to interact with the two world and I have to know my values in order to interact with them. And then on top of that, I have to know who I am when I'm just being. And when I'm just being, I'm like neutral. Like who is Britney if you're just being? You know, what should we strive for? I don't know. What's the point of anything? Fuck, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I think when people strive for certain goals, there is usually Sorry, that's why people practice certain people who go down the meditation route, say like you don't even exist because when you're just being the person that you think you are only exists through your ego and lived experiences. But what if you were just like energy in the universe and you're just there? Like you don't even exist at that point. But of course you exist in a world where like you have to then survive, right? There's nothing more ego driving than the need to survive, right? An idea of success and recognition in mind, which isn't unreasonable, by the way, mm. but it's usually pitched in this abundance, especially in those TikTok videos that I showed before, like having a giant mansion or five yachts. I remember I found it so frustrating when I was starting off on YouTube because when media wanted to interview me, I told my entire story and I thought it was great. <laughs> At least from my perspective, it, it was crazy, right? I had uh, gone from quitting university, working at a hot dog stand, <laughs> barely making any money, to all of a sudden reaching millions of people 
that to me was just such an unbelievable leap. Yeah, it was incomprehensible. I thought it was insane. But then the article comes out and it's just like, PewDiePie makes money. <laughs> it's like a f- <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like PewDiePie because it's like, he doesn't focus his life around money. I love it. Like, I, I love that so much because it's not about money. It's only about money when you're in the survival game and it does help. I'm not going to say like money doesn't help survive, but it's like Boogie. Boogie's in the position most Americans are, right? They're not making enough not to like get into more debt, but he thinks somehow he shouldn't be the one in debt with the rest of us. But it's like, yeah, dude, we all have bills that are too expensive for us to pay. So we pay it over time, which means we accrue interest, which means like we're in perpetual debt until we're not. But Boogie, for some reason, Boogie2899 uh, thinks like, or 2988, thinks like he shouldn't be a part of the crew because he's quote unquote a big YouTuber. So he should have lots of money. So then you see a PewDiePie, a Felix, and people go, he has lots of money. Of course, he's not worrying about things. But rich people everywhere worry about things. Like money is not the key to enlightenment, like, or whatever you want to call it, knowing the self-introspection. Is that all anyone cares about? I get it. It's a new, con- it was a new concept at that time as well. But uh, it's always what's at the forefront. That's the sort of how we measure success, I suppose. Which, hey, money isn't all bad, okay? No, I don't want to be all preachy beachy, but I, it's a terrible metric for success. Whenever I see those Sigma male memes or whatever, I really hope people are being ironic. Uh, <laughs> but there was actually a philosopher that brought up an idealized version of man. That's right, Friedrich Nietzsche. He did a couple more things than just growing a cool mustache. Who would have thought? He came up with the idealized human, the ubermensch. Reading from the Zarathustra, Man is a rope, fastened between animal and superman, or ubermensch, a rope over an abyss, a dangerous going across, a dangerous wayfaring, a dangerous looking back, a dangerous shuddering and staying still. What is great in man is that he is a bridge and not a goal. What can be loved in man is that he is a going across and a down going. This idea of the ubermensch or superman was the idea of what a human can be, although not easily achievable. He put a lot of emphasis on the individual. We all have different circumstances. We all have different experiences and choices. Mm -hmm. But we all have the capability of overcoming ourselves. No pain, no gain. That does fit on a gym (laughs) t-shirt. We shouldn't be content living a comfortable life. We should climb and reach for the mountaintops. I disagree. I think you should be... I think life is meaningless outside the ego. Which is the beauty of it. And we only create fake or... Like we only create... Even this, even saying like humans should strive for more is a concept of the ego. It's a construct of the ego. I should always strive for more. You should strive for, you should just be. You should just be. Just be. There's nothing to strive for. Just be. But you can't just be because in your head you're like, what are my bills and what about my life and what about my responsibilities? I agree. I'm in the same position. I only can be when I'm not interacting with the bubbles, which means parts of my day every day, right? I don't have, just like you don't, the luxury to just be because I do also need to attend to my basic human needs as a person. I need to eat and have shelter and have food and all that stuff, right? Absolutely. So the irony is like you know what to do and you know where you should go, but you also can't. And that is why you don't have to strive for anything. If you just live a life, the sacrifice will come to you. The suffering will come to you. Life itself is suffering, but it's the perfect kind of suffering, right? And also the most destructive kind of suffering is when you're dealing with different people in their egos, but including yourself, right? Kessler says, when you say ego, do you mean the mediator between id and the superego or something else? I mean the self. So when I say ego, I mean that relationship you're having with like your sense of self that thinks it's right and puts a value to knowing you're right. The the part of you that thinks uh, it knows. The part of you that is convinced it knows, right? The part of you that is convinced like... You have it. You have the thing. You have the right answer, the right sense of self. Like that thing only exists as a means of survival and sort of a 
way to separate yourself or even like connect yourself to others. But the ego is the thing that brings the conflict. Yeah, the part of you that is certain. That part. To overcome our limitations is a difficult climb, but that's up there is where the true beauty lies. A lot of Nietzsche's writing is very poetic, but often people... Yui says, so would you, uh, would, so would a good, oh, wait, would a good way to sum up what a five would be is to say individuals who have become capable of stepping away from their ego and looking at things from a rounded perspective rather than the perspective of the ego screams at? No. Because I'm also explaining like a, 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 a specific relationship with existing and existence. That, I think that could happen to a two. I think a two could practice separating away from the ego and still not be a five, Right. Because I think twos practice it in their own religious bubbles often, but it's always centered around the ego of God. So they can't actually escape their ego in the same way. But I don't think like you're escaping, you're having a different relationship with it too. So I think that'd probably be a more confusing way to summarize it. But I think I'm explaining a, a, a concept that can't be summarized easily. And that's the problem. The thing that I'm talking about, the reason I think I'm more digestible in long form is because I'm not just talking about something that's... um common most people aren't interested in philosophy most people are not in, they're interested in debating and they're interested in being right they're interested in their ego like rant's whole philosophy is about ego right like if you look at people even the way they worship philosophers like don't worship their ego worship the t like don't worship any of it just take a tool that's good for you you know what i mean but don't worship them don't be like oh i identify as this philosophy like don't identify with philosophers they're just people with ideas. Don't say, oh, I'm a leveler. Don't, because when you do whatever you're going to do. But if you do that, then you're building on your ego. You're like building on the thing that's attachment. You're doing the opposite. You're doing the opposite. So even when I say, oh, I'm a borderline, I'm just doing that because in the bubbles, it makes sense to them. They know what I mean. But if you, but obviously it doesn't matter in another context, right? So that's the problem is like, I don't think you can summarize something like this. I think you can, and there'd be only one reason to do that. And that would be to like, quote unquote, make it more comfortable for people. But that's not helpful, right? Because then the, you water down the idea in my head. But it's through the struggle that we have the capacity to overcome ourselves. Struggle isn't necessarily a bad thing. Right. And I think personally to see life through that lens of Nietzsche is so much more appealing than previously mentioned like Buddhism. Because we're all going to have tough circumstances instead right. of looking at, oh, woe is me. This is so difficult. Rather saying yes, embracing challenges, say yes to life. Life can be whatever you want. It's the ultimate video game. <laughs> Create your own values. So yeah, that is the essence of mm. becoming an Ubermensch, although very oversimplified. <laughs> you know, we're all on a journey. So let's keep dreaming. Let's keep realizing. We're all on a journey, my bros. Using our potential. Keep questioning yourself. Keep striving. Keep growing, and who knows? Maybe you're closer to an Uber Mensch than you thought. Was that motivational? I sure hope so. I want you guys to do well. I genuinely do. <laughs> I hope that helped. See you guys in the next video. Cute, cute, cute. Congratulations to Marcia and Felix. I'm so sorry. I'm turning away from the ad, Felix. I'm so sorry. Great video. Great point. All of it was great. It's like a summarization of the journey, and everyone's gonna have a different relationship with it, my bros. Vegan says, no, more so like the ego can be more involved not with wanting to not live than live because wanting to survive is kind of the difficult for many. Well, I think that's just, yeah, I think the ego, that's a version of it wanting to survive. So they think like uh, it's about choosing the easiest path. You know what I mean? It's about like choosing the easiest path. And for some people, the easiest path is to unalive. Well, for others, it's like easier to be alive and suffer, which is interesting because it's all a form of suffering because we don't know what happens after we die. So maybe nothing happens or maybe they something does happen. Like we just don't know these things. But I do think the ego can definitely, it isn't having a peaceful relationship with existence and, or itself. And so it lends itself to wanting to unalive. I do think unaliving yourself is like a cry for help ultimately um, because you're saying I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do better than this. The same that a person who lives without living, it's like almost like a cry for help. But ultimately, they like you can't help people who can't help themselves a little bit, even if it's just asking for help. But again, like you can spend your whole life trying to help them. If you want to do that, great. I just I try to help people that already 
know they want to help themselves. You know what I mean? Because they tend to be the people who most efficiently get the help. So I'm, I'm just, go, I'm playing a numbers game. You know, I'm just playing a numbers game there. And again, I'm not even trying to help in like a, this is my life and I'm a helper. I'm just trying to use my skill set to make a living, which by proxy helps people, which is cool. But obviously, like I don't identify as a person who like helps people because I think that's like a, it's sort of dishonest. I'm just a person who helped herself and I want to share that with you guys, but I can't help you. You have to help yourself. You know what I mean? I can just give you the tools. You have to help yourself. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.